House Speaker Nancy Pelosi officially moved forward with a formal impeachment inquiry into President Trump. For more on this and the potential market impact, let's bring in Wells Fargo Securities Head of Equity Strategy, Chris Harvey. Chris, great to have you with us. Great to be back. Um, your year-end target is 3088. Does anything change on the back of this? No, nothing changes, but you would expect to see a repricing of risk. Right. So with the uncertainty that we're putting forward, with the, the focus on impeachment, what would you expect? You expect bonds to rallies, your, your bond proxies do better, sell off in banks, a sell off in risk product for a short period of time. But we went back, we looked at Nixon, we looked at, at Clinton, and what you had back when Nixon was, was a bear market, and that bear market continued. And what an you, oil shock at that time. And, and an oil shock. What you had this time, or what you had with Clinton, was a bull market, and that bull market continued. So that's what we would expect. We expect a repricing, but that bull market to continue. Listen, this market has been very, very resilient. It's been somewhat paranoid, and it's been very skittish as of late. But what have you thrown out? You've thrown out interest rates going, potentially going down to 1%. You've thrown in a bombing in Saudi Arabia. You've thrown in the recession word time and time again. Now you have impeachment. So we should expect a little bit of repricing, but we do think that equities eventually go higher because the underlying fundamentals are still pretty good. What makes that repricing deeper? What makes that repricing deeper in the short term if trade and tariff starts to fall off the rails? Mm -hmm. um, always the issue is sentiment. What does sentiment do? If we start to see bonds do make it back down to 1%, you could see a little bit of unraveling. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, those are the things I would look at. So the, I think you're sort of dancing around U.S.-China relations. Does this speed up a deal or does this thwart any notion of a deal? Well, I, so the impeachment proceedings... It's pretty fresh. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. Why did they do it now? Right? What, is it, what are they trying to accomplish at this point in time? Because they're really probably not going to get it through the Senate. So are they trying well, they had to... they new news, didn't they? What's I mean, that? wasn't there a new event that was really the galvanizing But we don't, know, we don't know what's in that news, right? There could be, there could be a smoking gun, or maybe not. Right. Trump has been under investigation this, almost this whole time, and, and nothing's come of it. So I'm not sure exactly why they're doing it at this point in time. We'll find out very shortly, but a lot of it has to do with that. Maybe what possibly is they're getting close to negotiation. Maybe possibly the Democrats are trying to muck that up. I don't know. Maybe they do have, have a smoking gun. We don't know. Until we get more information, it's hard to really ascertain what's going to go on. What's your view of, of a Democrat winning uh, the White House? And would this be a wrench in President Trump's re-election re bid? Because uh, if could, because could, if if President Trump is weakened going into the 2020 right. election, it strengthens whichever candidate it may right. be. How how would Wells Fargo view that as a right. market so, negative, market so positive? That, it, if we're going to price in a Democrat, you have to price in a couple things. You would expect health care to be a little bit heavier, right? Because the Democrats have traditionally been a little bit uh, stronger handed on health care. Uh, with regard to market and market sensitivity, you would expect a Democrat not to be as friendly to markets, especially if it was Senator Warren. And, and so we would have to reprice in some of our expectations going just forward. Just a little bit. <laughs> just, 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 just a little bit. Tim's being sarcastic because you actually <laughs> think the repricing should be deep, more than a little bit. Look, if, if we thought that there was any prospect of, of Senator Warren right. having a real shot, the markets would be in, in, in trouble. Right. They'd, be, they'd be very, there'd be a lot of anxiety. But, but let's go back a couple of years. When Trump was about to be elected or when people thought he would be elected, what did people say? Is the, the U.S. And, and is a global economy going in recession? And that didn't happen. If you remember overnight when, when President Trump got elected, futures were down 5%. We ended up, I believe we ended up on the day. So I don't want to go to the nth degree just yet, but I would price in a, a more dramatic scenario with a Democrat than, than with President Trump. So in your model, what are you assuming for Europe uh, or the rest of the world for right. growth? So the rest of the world, so with China, what we think is China will stimulate until they, they can't. And they can, they can stimulate for a very, very long time, right? They don't want to negotiate from a position of weakness. They don't want to go into recession, and they don't have to. With regard to Europe, Europe is going into recession. We see that. We know that. What does that mean? That means for bonds, probably low for longer for some time. But economically, we have decoupled. And it looks like we can continue to decouple, but we still have to monitor the situation. So we've talked about a lot of negative stuff, right? right? But you still see the S&P making new highs. Right. So what, what are you most excited about in this market? Uh, it, it's really the resiliency. Again, we threw everything we could at the market in August, and we we're down 1.5%. 
one and a half percent. And then we had issues in the Middle East and the market still went higher. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing participation. We're seeing the market shake off bad news. And what we're seeing is a, a constant repricing. We had a repricing with momentum. We had a repricing with quant and the market moved higher. And so you're taking a lot of, a lot of froth out. You're taking a lot of things that um, could cause dislocations and making the market healthier as we move forward. As you're processing this news, Chris, what is the number one thing that you'll be grappling with when you get back to your desk? I'm assuming right. that tomorrow morning you're going to have to talk to clients about this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so what are you anticipating? So the first thing we say is exactly what we said before. This is what happened with Nixon. This is what happened with Clinton. Okay, that's our base case. The second thing is we start to focus back on trade and tariff because that is the overarching theme. That, and then we go back to the Fed. And then we just have to take in this information. What is there? Does it have teeth? And if it does have teeth, then we have to rethink how we look at markets, how we look at risk product, and, and the way things are going to be repriced. Because if there is something really there, then I do think we have more risk aversion in that market, and we have to rethink the way we look at the world going forward. How much repricing do you have in your model then? Or I mean, I, I know this is early. <laughs> Literally. <it's laughs> no, no, seven you're minutes sending ago. them back home to do some work tonight. You're like, when you get back to your desk tonight, Chris. When you Chris. get back to your desk, Chris, though, after the show, well. um, how are you going to think about just sort of the, the wheels just grinding to a halt right. in Congress? Even if, if that is the, just the sort of the minimum impact here. The wheels grinding to a halt in Congress. Well, typically when you have gridlock, that's a good thing for stocks. However, this time around, um, it's going to be a lot more difficult. The good thing is we're going to get a lot of information in a very short period of time. We're going to have negotiations around the 7th of October, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to have more information with regard to the impeachment. It will come out slowly in drips and drabs. We're going to have the, the transcript from, from the phone call w with Trump the other day. Let's see what's in there, right? Is there a smoking gun there? If there is, again, we have to reprice. If the, what do the Democrats come out with, and how unified are they? A and then let's take a look. Uh, President Trump, his approval rating is actually going up. Let's not forget that Bill Clinton, after his impeachment, his, his polls started to go higher. How does this work out? A and and what, what do we think the end game plan is? Is, this, is there really something here? Or are they trying to do this to, to hurt his reelection prospects? We don't know. And, and so as we go back, well, I'll be up in Canada tonight, but when I eventually go, go back to my desk, these are the things we'll start thinking about. And, and it's just hard to process at this mm -hmm. point. Right. But we do know that if there is something there, risk aversion is going to move higher. I mean, you're going to Canada, but you're bringing your laptop, right? <laughs> <laughs> and my Blackberry right. and my iPhone. Working on the Chris, plane. thank you. Thank, thank Chris you. Harvey of Wells Fargo. What do you think, Karen? I think, the, like you, the VIX is too low. There are too many potential things. I mean, I'm long. I'm always long. So if Mark goes down, I'm losing money. But I still think the VIX is too low. You need some protection.